As has promised earlier, Nana Oye Letha, the Honorable Minister for Right. Very bright <laughs> uh, this morning. So we have um, quite a number of questions uh, to pose to you this morning, yes. but you're welcome to New Day. Thank you very First of much. all, before you, where are the helm of affairs at the ministry? I think it was the Ministry of Women and, Women and, and Children, Children Affairs. affairs. Yes. And so does the change in name mean that there's some structural changes in the ministry? A lot of structural okay. changes because it was Women and Children Affairs. Mm -hmm. Then President John Dramani Mahama changed it into gender, children, and social protection and gave it an extended or expanded mandate yeah. where we're now not only providing social welfare but actually empowering vulnerable uh, people and okay. brought In men included. Yes, okay. vulnerable people yeah. and brought persons with disability under our mandate. Elderly persons were brought under our mandate. Social welfare was brought under our mandate. Mm -hmm. And then social protection was also brought under our mandate. So we had uh, fragmented directorates and departments okay. from other sector ministries being okay. brought. And of course, um, school feeding and LEAP. I see. So there was a need to look at the structural change. And so we called it an agenda for change. Mm -hmm where we got team building and we're really grateful to UNDP and the UN system in Ghana for supporting the ministry. So at the end of three to four years, from 2013 to now, we've been able to do our restructuring. Now everybody has a job description. We were assisted by the Office of the Head of Civil Service. And very importantly, we have a strategic plan for the ministry, which will launch in about three or four weeks. So okay. there's been a lot of training, okay. a lot of training that focused on team building. Yeah. Because even right to the regional level, we had regional directors for children, for gender, and then also for social welfare. And they had to work together yeah. as a team for us to be able to fulfill our mandate. So right. that has been B because, successful. Because hitherto, from the name, we could tell that um, this was your, the ministry was more protective of, of women and children. Uh, today, uh, we, we saw on one of the dailies, uh, the, on the front page, in fact, Docs who reported over 2,800 men, men yes. were beaten yes. by their wives. Yes. The tables are gradually turning on them. I don't think the tables are turning because okay. for every 1,000, we have about 10,000 women is that an increase or a decrease in the number of husbands beaten by the wives it's an increase it's an increase, it's an increase. Yes, what accounts for this yes it's an increase of course i think we have more people reporting um, uh, the ghana police service and the domestic violence and victim support unit have done a lot of work have created a lot of awareness and so hitherto the men would not report but now they feel more comfortable because the approach has been gender yeah. the approach has been looking at violence with men looking at violence with with women as uh, perpetrators and also as victims mm -hmm. and you know we launched a major uh, research on gender-based violence okay. and there also we mainstreamed men and violence as perpetrators and as victims mm -hmm. and and it showed the same and now we have uh, for the first time we have um, data on the number of men who are actually um, victims. Okay. I wish we had all the time to yes. enumerate and discuss the achievements the ministry has struggled, especially under your leadership. But there's a media press series you're, you're going to start yes. to. I'm sure some of these issues would yes. come up. But an issue, a cardinal issue that would come up is about human trafficking. Ghana has been classified a tier two watch list country on the anti-human trafficking index report. What does this mean? How bad is it? Well, it means that we have not done very well in terms of addressing issues relating to human trafficking mm -hmm. in Ghana. It means that uh, we have not had um, that many prosecutions and convictions on um, human trafficking. And this is um, a matter of concern for government. So at the highest level, the president has appointed a coordinator uh, for human trafficking that is situated at the Ministry of Interior. The Attorney General and Minister of Justice, the Minister of Interior, Minister of Employment, and yours truly, Minister of Gender, we have uh, set up a committee, at the, the four of us at the highest and foreign affairs, to also look at the issue. And we have a technical team. One, we've done an audit of prosecutions. 
the Attorney General has gone through all the pending dockets together with um, the Ghana Police Service, and they have a dedicated team that is going to scale up prosecution. Another issue in the recommendations by the U.S. State Department, the TIP report, was on um, our, um, our, the absence of a national shelter. We are being supported by IOM. IOM and Government of Ghana are now going to turn um, the, a shelter okay. at victim Medina, shelter. a victim okay. shelter. So that yeah. is also being done. Okay. Currently, as we speak, there are 35 police officers who are being trained. We are also grateful to the Ghana Airport Company who have given us um, office um, office facilities and an, um, and an office at the Kotoka International Airport. Because, you know, we have quite a number of young people yeah. On daily but, basis, yes. leaving. But, but, but how did we even get here in the first place? The 2014 edition of the report cited Ghana as a source, transit, and destination country yes. for men, women, and children yes. subjected to forced labor, sex trafficking. That says a lot about the institutions and agencies mandated to fight this. How did we even get here? Well, this has been a long standing um, issue. It has to do with development, it has to do with migration. It has to do with unemployment. It has to do with poverty. And so that is what occasioned the promulgation of the Suffice human to say, the legal structures act. are not working. So traffickers the find The legal space. structures are working, but there's a need to review. For instance, that's why the Ministry of Employment is at the center of this. We need to look at um, labor and employment, some of the contracts um, that uh, people are entering into to migrate abroad we have a lot of that where we have um, agencies who are not even licensed recruiting Ghanaians to work abroad especially um, in the Middle East they go and there are loads of problems Ministry of Foreign Affairs is also in involved there's this visa um, um, visa to Saudi Arabia which has now been cancelled and so there are a lot of issues but the good thing is that we acknowledge as a government that there's a challenge with trafficking and we are working very hard to address how, these how challenges. How close are we to tier three where we stand to lose a lot of international funding? For instance, the US has threatened to cut yes. off the $500 million. Yes. Dollars. The good thing is yeah. that we know there's a problem and we have actually sat down as a government, multi-sectorial, and we have a plan that addresses and we'll make sure that Ghana climbs up and we address. Um, just two weeks ago, we were in Cote d'Ivoire uh, to sign a joint um, declaration. That is the two first ladies of Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana. And because this is also cross-border. So we are making all the, we are implementing all the interventions to ensure that human trafficking is addressed. Because I saw a statement given by Mr. Jackson, U.S. Ambassador to Ghana. He said that while government of Ghana did not carry out investigations and some publicity campaign last year was irrevocably marred by the complete lack of prosecutions, says a lot about Well, the that is a wrong statement. Or conviction, okay, may I, let yes. me finish. Or yes. conviction of a single yes. trafficker. He says the number of victims identified decreased. Funding for law enforcement training was inadequate. Funding for victim services and shelters, which you just mentioned, he says was not existent. That is not true. Actually, last year, we rescued over 20 young uh, men and boys um, from South Africa. And I'm sure your team, your team was there to cover. So it's not true that nothing um, happened. Though there has been an issue with data collection. There were some convictions. There were some prosecutions. But what we discovered was that the, the process of even collecting the data has been uh, problematic. And so these are issues, institutional issues, that we are dealing with. Because right from the district level, the police, social welfare also do some work together with NGOs. And all this data has to be captured accurately. So these are all issues that we are, we are correcting the, and dealing the with. The report also seems to suggest that intra-country trafficking is more prevalent than um, transnational. Is, is there any truth in that? We can't um, say that. Um, the intra-trafficking has been with us for decades yeah. for i mean let's say maybe yeah. 50 or even 100 yeah. years where we have uh, for instance the children who live along the coast being um, um being sold yes. 
I was wondering why there's a saturation uh, of that problem, especially in coastal areas. Well, it's 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 part of the culture. It's been part of the culture, and that is what um, we are trying to um, address. So, for instance, we are employing and using social protection, where we're creating safety nets and ensuring that the coastal communities we we give them a source of livelihood because you know we have dwindling um, um the fishing industry is suffering yes. because of uh, dwindling fish, fish stock, stock. Yes. and what have you so what we are doing and the ministry of fisheries is also doing is that we're empowering and providing a source of livelihood uh, for instance for the leap we specially target some of the communities we have a mapping we have a map and we can tell you the communities where they uh, traffic these yeah. children. So we are able to target them with social protection. There's also the issue of teenage pregnancy and poverty. So then some of our social mm. protection programs, we specifically target these communities no, no, not to, say this to will reduce be, yeah. their vulnerabilities. Not to say this will be an effort in futility, but you know, like you mentioned, this is, in fact, some have said this is just a cultural distortion of, of what we've done in the past. You know, it's very normal for rural folk to send their children the awards to work you know um, with people in the town with relatives and friends in in towns but well how do you deal with such a problem when it's deeply ingrained in in tradition you change the culture by explaining sensitizing and also providing alternate sources of livelihood which can be sustained and that is exactly what our government is doing with um, the coastal communities mm. and then you're also doing something similar with with kaya yes um, we're doing a lot of work together yeah. with youth employment authority mm -hmm. um we started with um, we started with four we're hitting a thousand we registered um, youth employment has registered about 2,000, 2,500. And, uh, yes. But uh, we've started with um, about 450. And uh, their learning skills, uh, catering, um, some of them are in woodwork. Some of them are learning driving. Um, some of le mm. them are learning hairdressing. And the good thing is that with the YEA module, we call it the out of school youth, the YEA module, mm -hmm. they will also um, get an internship. And uh, some of them are learning stuff about the service industry, like waitering and um, um, being waitresses. Okay. Um, so it's not just okay. catering, hospitality, hospitality and, industry. Okay. And it's really very, very interesting. And um, really interesting is the, the driving and the others. It's uh, where, actually where, some where, of the modules here, and I'm yes. going to touch on those yes. in a yes. bit. But I need to ask, weren't yes. we looking at, at ending this phenomenon in its entirety, uh, the, the phenomenon of, of Kaya, of, of our female headquarters? Has yes. the goal changed? The goal has not changed. This is one way of ending it, where we call it migration. Yes. So those we are training will migrate from carrying the load yes. to um, getting a sustainable yeah. employment. But isn't this an open invitation for more migrant girls and women? It is not an it open. Is, it's, not. it's not an open in, in, um, invitation. Yeah. Uh, we're looking at short-term and medium-term and long-term interventions, yeah. and this is one. Um, this is one of them. We're targeting ten thousand um, in all. Mm -hmm. So we even have, and we're really very grateful. I mean, the the beauty of it is the joint collaboration. So even Metro Mass is also part of this process. I see. So we have uh, fifty-one um, Kaya um, coming from Ashaman on daily basis. YWCA to YWCA for the training. We have some from Agboboloshi and other places coming in um, to Assemblies of God, Agret. So these are the two okay. that are currently um, running. We also have, um, have um, been able to register over 3,000 of them under National Health Insurance Scheme. We are, uh, we are, we are supporting Kayaye and addressing the vulnerabilities. Okay. So for instance, at Malata Market and also at Gugloshi, we have the... Uh, domestic violence uh, response center that is a mobile center where they can go we have somebody um, girls education unit we have somebody from social welfare and dofsu so that those who want to go to school very soon we'll start on pilot basis yeah. uh, remedial for those who want to go to school we will be working with retired um, teachers as part of our 
aged uh, policy yeah. where those who can volunteer will volunteer for an allowance. I think it's a phenomenal initiative. However, why can't we take this to the three northernmost regions from where these girls come? They're the supply areas, you know, for these um, female headquarters. So we can have the, the reverse effect. Why, why won't we do that? Perhaps they could also improve the economic fortunes of that region. We have between 18 and 25,000 Kayaye in Accra. We have currently. about currently we have about two three thousand in Aflao. We also have about maybe eight thousand or more mm -hmm. in Kumasi. So mm -hmm. in all the regional capitals, you have them. Okay. So it, we have a multifaceted approach. Okay. So, so this our is to deal intervention with now. is to deal with now okay. those there because um, some of them do not yeah. want to go back. Yeah. And so if they do not want to go back, mm -hmm. what can we do? We can give them a trade yeah. that they can use. Mm -hmm. And then they will get off the streets. They have a trade. Because mind you, with the YEA, they are also given an allowance. Yeah. And even with the allowance that YEA gives to them, YEA will invest some of the allowance. Yeah. So that at the end of the one year, two years, or three years, they also have an investment that will sustain them okay they have a skill okay. and they can be employed okay. and yea is also going to ensure that they place them in in jobs so that is what we're looking at and then together with them um, sada we are also looking at um um the sustainable okay. livelihood. I'm looking at some of the world. modules here MS Officing, Processing, Typing, ICT. I mean, I, I can safely presume a significant number of, of these girls are illiterate. What's the mode of education? No, you will be surprised. Interesting. We have university graduates, we even have uh, those SSS, a lot of SSS. I'm sorry. Yes. Who are head yes, are Yes, yes. You have university graduates who are head, and then we also have SSS. So that's why for those. That's, that's hard to believe. That's yes, incredible. Yes, it is. Yeah. You know, we did. Uh, um, why uh, we did um, uh, the fail forms they entered in their details so quite a number of them have SSS and for those who didn't do very well with SSS we're actually um, going to do the remedial, remedial and program. you know um, Ministry of Education is providing 10,400 scholarships so some of them those who want to go back to school can sit exams and then go back to school thank you so much you're beginning the me the press series yes. when does this start where it's on the 13th but for this whole week you yeah. see our directors our officers mm -hmm. all of us on air talking about the achievements of government under social protection under gender and under children thank you so much thank it was a you. pleasure having you nana oye litha the honorable minister for gender children and social protection you're watching new day